What is up all you beautiful YouTube family? Welcome back to the Bad LSX Garage YouTube channel. In this week's video, I'm going to show you guys how to get a show quality shine out of spray cans. Stick around, stay tuned, and let's roll to that intro. Again, fam, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the compound to the Bad LSX Garage. Glad each and every one of you decided to stop back by this week to see what we are doing and what we are about. So, yes, we are going to paint with spray cans, and I'm going to give you a show quality paint job with those spray cans. I've been on Facebook forums. 2024 Road Glide, they've got like, I don't know, four or five different ones out there. And you guys that's watching the channel may, may be following me as well on those. You may have seen me posted on those. But some of the questions that I've been seeing are just, they're good questions, but the answers to some of those questions are just, it blows my mind, the, the stuff that comes out of people's just, well, out of a better word, mouth. I'm just going to be nice about it. But people are asking questions, you know, who is painting your tour pack? Who is painting, insert here, whatever. Who is, and what are they charging? What paint are they using? Can I use this such paint? And people are getting online and saying, no, you have to use Harley Davidson paint. It only can be used Harley Davidson, that's it. When I posted this picture of my bike on the forums, and I posted that this is actually done with spray paint, I was told two different things. One, I was a liar, and two, that I was a genius. Now, I'm neither. I'm not a liar, nor am I a genius. I'm far from either. But I'm here to tell you that it absolutely can be done with paint other than Harley Davidson. I know I said in last week's video that I probably wasn't gonna paint these fairing extensions. I told you guys to put down in the comment section, what would you do? Would you paint them? Would you leave them black? Or would you put the carbon fibre on them? Well, after I've kind of sat back and just looked at the bike, yes, this looks good. Yes, it flows good. But I don't know, it's just missing something. And I believe that something is gonna be the color match. And today, I'm gonna color match them. The fairing extensions and the fan shroud or radiator shroud. We have all heard the saying, 90% prep work, 10% execution. And while I have to agree in most cases, that's true. And I said most cases. Most cases you have a car or something that's wavy, something that you have to do some major body work with which means a lot of sanding, a lot of taping, a lot of body filler, a lot of prep work. But if you have good products like I had with the Tour Pack or like with this fairing extension, you don't have to do a whole lot of prep work. The only prep work that I'm seeing is getting rid of this clear coat. And well, let's start off by saying that yes, you do have to get rid of any sort of clear coat. See the clear coat, see the shine? In order to get paint to adhere to this product, I actually have to rough this up. I have to get this clear off. And in order to do that, I would generally start off with 600 grit or 800 grit sandpaper. And then you want to get it to a dull finish. But it's plastic. So, or it's ABS plastic. So I really don't want to go drastic. I don't want to go with a really coarse sandpaper because it's going to make waves in this product. So I'm going to go with probably 800 grit. Now a lot of people will take an orbital sander and that's good, that's great. Myself personally, I like doing it by hand. I like to be able to feel what I'm doing. You can feel the lines. You guys are probably not going to be able to see the lines, but there's a little bit of a line right here. And you want to keep everything smooth. You want to keep everything with that line. If you have an orbital sander going with it, you're not going to necessarily feel those lines as much as you can with a flat hand and that sandpaper. So I want to keep everything as smooth as possible. Now, a lot of people will tell you not to do wet sanding. Just don't. When you're doing this, don't do wet sanding. I disagree. To me, wet sanding makes everything much easier. You don't have a cleanup as much. Yes, it's milky looking because you're sanding off that clear coat and that clear coat turns into when you start sanding it, it looks like milk. 
but it's better than powder. It's better than that dust going everywhere. So therefore I like to wet sand. And it also keeps your sandpaper from clogging up. It keeps you from going through so many sheets of sandpaper. So that's what I do. Now, I also use Sprayway glass cleaner for wet sanding. I know it's a little expensive, but to me it's a great product. And if you don't want to do that, I also recommend and have also used and still use Dawn dishwashing liquid in a five gallon bucket. Just dip it down in and just, and go to town. You're good to go. Right now, let's get this roughed up. I'll show you my final product and what the product is supposed to look like before we put primer on it. As you can see, we've got them sanded down. There are no more shiny spots on this, on this part, and that's what you want. On the back, I have it taped, taped up. That way when I spray it, I'm not wasting excess paint on the back. I want it focused in where I actually need it. As you can see on this one, we've actually taken it down a little farther. Don't be worried. If you go down this far and you actually get down to the material of, you know, like this is with the plastic, don't worry about it. It'll be okay, because you're getting ready to cover it up with primer, so it's not gonna hurt anything anyway. So once you're sure you've got everything the way you need it, you wanna go back over it, either one, with rubbing alcohol and clean it really well, or with acetone or something like that. Make sure to clean it really well. Get all of your fingerprints off of it, get any oils that may be on it, dirt, whatever. And as you can see, I'm touching it from the back. I'm not gonna touch it anymore from, from the front. This primer is nothing fancy. Just a Rust-Oleum primer. I didn't go out of my way, $4 a can, and just shake it up really well, and just make sure to get good even coverage. And make sure to get overlap, guys. Make sure to get plenty of overlap. Good morning, fam. It's a new day. Glad you're here. Glad you stopped back by once again to see the finished product or at least get somewhat to near the finished product. And you may be wondering what's happened, where, why have you waited? Why is it next morning? Well, in my honest opinion, I like to let the primer cure. I like to let it set up a little bit, whether that's 16 hours to 24 hours or days. If I have time, I would let it set up for days, but I don't have necessarily the time. As you can see, this is the primer product. One has been sanded, one has not. You may be asking yourself, am I gonna leave it like this? No, I'm not. This is just here for an example for you guys. So the reason I am sanding, one, we're not in a professional environment. We are painting outside, so therefore you're gonna get bugs you're gonna get dust. The paint product that comes out of these cans sometimes, the spray nozzle is not the best and you may get little mists of paint and droplets. Just different things happen. And if you laid paint over the top of that garbage, well, that's what your paint is gonna look like is garbage. So you want a smooth product for that paint to adhere to. So this is the product that has not been sanded. Now it looks good from a distance. But when you really get up on it, and the GoPro may not show it, there's little bumps and there's little just places in this that's not right. And if I laid paint on it, it would drive me insane because I would see those at the end of the day. And that's what we don't want. We don't want to be able to see none of these little imperfections. We don't want to be able to see none of that. So therefore, I'm going to take 800 grit sandpaper, nothing less, 800 and we're gonna sand this down. We're gonna get it smooth. Now, I know it sounds wrong because I told you you don't want a smooth product to lay paint on, but it's not necessarily smooth. It's still rough. It's rough enough to where it will adhere, but it's not so rough that it, it's like this, in other words. Then after we get it down to this type of the way we want it, this is, this is what you want. This is ready for paint, sort of. We want to take our lacquer thinner, after we are 100% sure, take your lacquer thinner and then go over it really well, making sure not to touch where you're going to paint. Because obviously you have oils in your hands and that oil mixed with the primer and mixed with the paint, it just doesn't go well together. I would like to tell you that painting is easy. That painting is just, you know, go in and do it and get it done and it's going to be perfect. But it's not. It's time consuming. 
it does take a little time. It takes a keen eye. It takes watching every little detail that you do. I think that's why I like it so much is because it is time consuming and it actually takes my mind off of other things. I have to focus at directly what I'm doing. So with that being said, as you've seen before and you've seen just now, I go in lightly. I miss the part really well. I don't go in heavy the first coat. The second coat I'll go in and then I'll make sure that I get good even coverage all around. By the third coat, I'm laying it down pretty heavy. So heavy in fact that it looks like that it's actually got a clear coat on it. It's coming out wet looking and super shiny. And with that, you wanna keep it like that, but you got, there's a fine line there. You don't want it so thick that it starts to run, but at the same time, you wanna maintain that shininess and you wanna keep an overlap. And what do I mean by an overlap? Well, when it sprays out of that nozzle, you've got a pattern about this thick. What you wanna do is the next pass around, you wanna overlap this first pass at at least 50%. So when you're coming back, you're right here. Yes, this section right here is getting a little more paint than this section up here, but in the end, it all equals out and it makes sure that everything has an equal coverage. Now we're gonna let this set up for five, 10 minutes, then we're gonna go back out and recover it again. You just do this until you get the desired effect. You get where everything is covered well, you don't see any spots that maybe you could see the primer through or whatever. And then when you're happy with that, you let it set up and dry. It's set up for a couple of days, and now you're ready for the next step. I'm gonna start off with 1500 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna take my glass cleaner once again as a good lubricant. I'm gonna spray everything down heavily, and then I'm gonna take the 1500 grit sandpaper, fold it over, and then fold it again. And then one stroke, one or one one direction. I mean, you can go back and forth. It can be a couple of strokes, but it needs to be the same direction. You just want to work the product. Now, keep in mind on these lines right here, where the where the line may crease to the body, be light on those sections because if you go too heavy, it, it tends to when the paper is folded around, the paper tends to ride heavier on that crease line. So that's the line that you don't want to hit so hard. Yes, you want to you want to touch it, but you don't want to get so heavy in it that it actually burns through and causes a mess and causes something that you have to fix later. A lot of people have a hard time with this process because they think you've got to go WFO. They think you got to go wide freaking open like you did in the beginning. You know, when this was black and you had to actually cut it down with 600 and get all that clear coat and everything so it could be roughed up and ready to paint. Well, you don't have to do that with this. All you're doing is just cutting off that imperfections, the little dust particles, the stuff that may be wrong. At this point, we are ready to buff. Now, some people do it different ways. This is just the way I do it. It may not be the right way, may not be the correct way, but it works. Anywho, I don't want to take off a lot of material at one time. So what I like to do is 1500 and then I'm ready to buff it. And how do I buff it? Well, a lot of people want to use their cutting compound and that's great. That's all well and good if you've got a great paint job, but this is spray paint. So that's a little too much. We don't want to take that much material. We don't want to cut out that much. So I go to my griots. I either go to the perfecting cream or the finishing sealant and I use my orbital buffer. Now, if you don't have a buffer, I highly recommend you go get one, but if you don't, you can use the little pads, the waxing pads, and, and do it by hand. It's just gonna take a lot more time, a lot more effort than really what you need to do. But what I do is I load my pad up good. I put three or four or five dots around the pad, take my hand, wipe it thoroughly over the pad, make sure the pad is loaded really well, and then I'll take put three or four little dots on the product itself smear all of that in, and then actually start to buff the product. I'll go over that product several times by buffing and then wiping off, buffing, wiping off, and then at the end, when I think it looks the way it should, I'll take, if it's where I want it, I'll leave it. If not, I'll stop, and then I will go to the next step, which would be 
eh, 3,000 grit. If you've watched this channel any period of time, you know that I try to bring a lot of different things to the table, whether that's cars, trucks, motorcycles, which it's mostly motorcycles, vacations, whatever it may be, I try to bring to you guys. One of the other things that I try to bring you to you guys is a little bit of confidence, a little bit of know-how, just to motivate you guys. And well, let me explain. I know it kind of sounds a little bit cocky and I hope it doesn't come off that way because that's not really the way I mean it to be, but we are so guilty and including myself of people getting on the internet. In the back of your mind, you know that you can do something, but we get on the internet and then we let people talk us out of being able to do it. They make fun of us or they laugh at us or they laugh at our ways and well, that discourages you. You don't want to at that point do anything. And then you take what you think you can do and take it to somebody else and they succeed with your thoughts and you have to pay them for something that you know that you could do. And that's a little bit frustrating and that's why I'm here. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. That's one of the reasons why I made this channel was to tell you guys that you can do it. Get up off the couch, quit listening to the Facebook forums and all the social media nonsense and just get out there and try it. Yes, I understand you may have some questions. We all do. That's what happens. That's how you learn. You ask the question, if you don't get the right answer, you kick down the next door till you get the answer. It may not be the answer that you're looking for, but don't never take no for an answer, which is what brought me to this video. To be honest, that's why I started making this video was because people telling everybody else on Facebook forums that no, you can't use this paint. No, you can't use spray paints. No, you have to use Harley Davidson paint. This isn't the 1930s anymore, guys. We're in 2024 where you can go to Napa, O'Reilly's, CarQuest, anywhere and literally have paint mixed to your specification. There's not one gatekeeper that holds the, the codes here. You can get it anywhere. Now, with that being said, yes, I'm using Colorite and yes, no, they're not sponsoring me, but yes, I do like their product. But that doesn't mean that there isn't other products out there that work just as well or better than Colorite. And I'm not gonna put nobody down for that. With that being said, I'm done, rant over, but I believe we achieved what we was after, correct? We got the show quality shine, we got the show quality look with paint cans. This is proof in the pudding that it absolutely can be done. You just have to little, little time, little effort, and just a little want to. Don't let people tell you no. Anyways, fam, that's all I've got for you for this week's video. I don't know what's gonna happen for next week's video. I don't, I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together if we have to. Until next week, you ready, fam? I love each and every one of you. Glad you stopped back by and hopefully you'll keep stopping by. Let's do this. You ready? Peace. I'm out.